Beauty and Brains presents a work in progress. Your favorite weekly podcast all about navigating adulthood and adversity with transparency and vulnerability. Here, we highlight progress over perfection. You're listening to my personal professional development diary, where I share the highs and lows and the real and raw parts of the story that no one talks about. I'm your host, Breland Hunt, a work in progress. Dear friend, I hope all is well with you and that you are as healthy in body as you are sound in mind and strong in spirit. Welcome back to A Work in Progress, the podcast, and Happy New Year. Happy New Year, you guys. This is the first podcast episode of 2022, and I'm excited to be here. I actually just got like a a little, as soon as I was like ready to press record, I've been preparing for this podcast all day. It's another recording on Sunday, uploading on Sunday type thing. Um, But we did it last week. So I know that we can do it again, even if it takes the whole day. But I mean, I'm getting I'm literally like my underarms are starting to sweat. (laughs) I don't know why I'm getting nervous. I feel like this is going to be a really good podcast episode. I have a lot to talk to you guys about. So I'm excited about you know what we're going to talk about today. I don't really know why I just got nervous like that. But we're gonna we're just gonna go with it you know welcome back to work in progress you guys um oh my gosh (laughs) so this is the new year episode right we are going to be doing a reflection as well as like talking about what I'm looking forward to in this next year I think this episode is going to be really important because you know I've just been loving filming the podcast recently I finally found my groove with it um you know at first I was like I don't really know if I like this (laughs) I don't really know if I'm feeling it but I I am enjoying it now. I really do feel like this is like me writing out my diary and I feel like I'm discovering things as I'm speaking them with you all and I have this community and all the things. So I'm just super excited and grateful um, and I'm so happy that I can continue to do this in 2022. So this is my year in review. So in January of last year, I declared that 2021 was going to be the year of gratitude. Oh, Breelan. I have so much to get into about that word with you guys today. But before we do, a couple of things. Housekeeping rules, first of all. Welcome. (laughs) No, but if you're watching on YouTube, make sure you subscribe, leave a comment, like. If you're listening to the podcast on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, wherever you listen to your podcast, make sure you rate the podcast. Five star ratings only. Leave a review. I'm loving reading your reviews. They mean the world to me. Thank you so much. Also, I want to mention that if you guys are, I wouldn't even say OGs because OGs, I mean, there have been so many different, um, versions of Breelan and my content but but last year in 2020 actually oh wow so now two years ago in 2020 that in between period right after I graduated um my master's program and I was working and I was living at home I started a newsletter and I was writing kind of every week and honestly my podcast is basically what my newsletters were except for like Again, it's just as much work because like writing the newsletters was a lot of work, but I enjoyed it because it allowed me to literally like write it out like it was like a diary and I was able to share with people and it was in a more like safe space than, you know, my YouTube channel. And now I guess I just let it all out because I have it here just straight up as content for the podcast. But um, I am going to also go back to writing the newsletters. So if you're excited, newsletter family, if you're already subscribed to my newsletter, you know that I sent out my first one last year. I did like my year in review and I think that that was great homework in order to prepare for this podcast just reflecting on literally what the heck happened in 2021. So I sent that out last week and I forgot to tell you guys in the podcast episode that went out before that, that I was going to start doing that. So this is your reminder, you're probably like two newsletters behind at this point, but I will leave the link in the description box down below if you want to sign up for the newsletters. I will also be sending out the show notes for every episode of the podcast. So if you're not listening to this on YouTube and maybe you don't have your notifications on for your podcast, this will be another great way to kind of get like like notifications and maybe you look into things and also just to have all those links right in your inbox if you would like. So yay, exciting new things. We're kind of like going back to doing something old, but also leveling up because it's new and improved. So yes, the Beauty and Brains newsletter coming right to you in your inbox every single week. If you want one, the link will be in the description box down below. 
Okay, so let's first start off with Honestly, I can't even tell you why I wanted my word of the year for 2021 to be gratitude because I definitely did not have a, well, I guess that's what it was. It was the right amount of, you know what? I could do better in this area of my life. I think that I understand the importance. This is me, 2021 Breland, thinking, I think I understand the importance of gratitude and it's something that I should do better at. So I think that I'm gonna make this my word of 2021. That way I continuously focus myself around and I always center myself back and what a naive thought (laughs) if only she knew um so I created this gratitude prayer that I prayed not every single day but you know most of the days I tried to pray this prayer and a part of it which I think again just kind of tells where my heart was in the beginning of the year when I wanted gratitude to be my word of the year was I asked that I would not miss the blessings of today living for tomorrow. I would say, Lord, I trust you and I will not lean on my own understanding. I believe that your plan is the best plan for my life. I'm grateful for the experiences, opportunities, and influence that I have. Please continue to foster those feelings in my heart and in the forefront of my mind. And there's a little bit more that goes before that and after that, but that's kind of like the prayer that I I have been praying like I created that prayer, honestly, I think in June of 2020. And I really kind of felt like this is helping me out get through my year. I kind of want the same energy all of 2021. I think you guys know, right? Like if you've been the fact that (laughs) what was 2021 for me, you know, God bless. Congratulations to you if you had a great 2021. I'm so happy for you. I feel like And sometimes I look back on my years, like, for example, 2017 for me was a bad year. Like, you hate to say that the years were bad because like, oh, they taught you something and da 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 Can we be real and say like, no, like if we really look back on that year and sometimes I didn't even know how bad 2017 was until like years have gone by and I look back and I'm like, that was really a bad year. Like bad thing after bad thing happened. And even like just some really deep traumas happened that year that still impact me to this day and kind of made me the person who I am today, either for the better or for the worse. I feel like that's how 2021 is going to be for me moving forward. Nothing was the same. This year just brought me out of my comfort zone. It brought me to my lowest. I can almost, it's like, I'm scared to call it this because I don't want to be dramatic. (laughs) But I also, I feel like 2021 was my Job year, right? (laughs) I'm laughing because I I hope that this is my Job year. I hope that this is like the lowest it ever gets and that, you know, I really pushed through and I persevered and now, you know, it's all going to be rainbows and butterflies and sunshine from here. But the likelihood that this is my Job year is, it's slim, it's very possible that I'll have multiple job years. It's very possible. But I mean, I say that this is my job year because Job said that he was tested and tried on all sides. Illness, grief, pain, suffering, spiritual attacks. Like Job went through it. Like when we think about Job, and but he has such an interesting perspective and it's I'm reading Job right now as I start this new year again, as I'm kind of closing out last year and stepping into this new year, really, really want to like just fully reflect on what the heck just happened. And it's like, you know, sometimes Job was like, are you serious right now? Is this really like, I'm your dude, I'm your guy. Why is this happening to me? Why is this my life? But then he also still had this amazing he still admired the Lord and he still gave reverence to him and he still trusted him and he still believed in him even when he was upset, even when he was under attack, even when everything was taken from him. And so he's like in this teeter totter, like right, the whole book of Job is him going back and forth literally with God. Like, why are you doing this to me? All right, I trust you. Man, this sucks. Why are you doing this to me? All right, you're right. You got it. You got it. Like, and I feel like that's literally how my year was, but mainly to the point where I felt like everything was taken from me, where I felt like 2021 was the low of all lows. Like, and, and so it's scary because how how I didn't how could I have known that the year that I that would that I would be tested at such extreme levels again in 
every aspect of life, like (laughs) the way that I'd be tested in every single aspect of life would also be the year that I declare that I would be grateful. The year that I declare that I would have gratitude because they don't align. But then at the same time, of course they do, right? It's like, of course, the year that you say, you know, no matter what, Lord, thank you. I will trust you, Lord. I will, I believe that your plan is the best plan for me. That's the year that you're the most confused. That's the year that he takes everything away, that you're, that you're at your lowest lows. Like, of course it makes sense. It's kind of like, you know, when you say like, and I do this all the time and I try and refrain from saying it, where like, especially at work, you know, somebody will do something to you and you, I mean, breath, you just like patience, Lord, patience, <laughs> like patience, give me patience, Lord. Well, he's not going to be like sprinkle. <sighs> ah, there's your patience. You have enough patience to get you through the day. Here's enough patience for the month or the year. Here's your patience for 2021. It's like, no, he's going to put you in a situation where you have to build patience. So how naive of me to think that I wasn't going to be pushed to a level to where I would want to be nothing, anything other than grateful. I would want to be really upset and really, I have pity parties and all these other things, but instead despite of those things, in spite of those things, choose gratitude. If I would have known, if I would have known now. And even like I think about how Job says that he was encouraged neither by his circumstances nor his loved ones. I talk about how like lonely of a year this was. Not only like missing out on my community here online, which really plays a big part in it like now that you guys are like back and you're in full force and you're in my dms and you're you know in the comments and you're emailing me back for my newsletters i'm just like wow i really isolated myself but even like the people who are genuinely in my life like nobody has really been able to get i won't say nobody but everybody has their own small portions of what they've been able to get but nobody the full grand picture of like yo this year has been crap for me no let's just keep it a buck this year has been hell for me from literally January 1st (laughs) all the way up until the 31st this year has been it's had me fighting for my life I feel okay now we're in a new year right (laughs) and the year of gratitude is over in theory you know I'm going to continue to have a grateful heart moving forward but what have I learned from the Lord building my muscle of gratitude throughout this year my gratitude theory, right? If I were to write an analysis of this year, kind of write a letter to my 2021 self at the end that I wish I could have read in the beginning would be like, perhaps happiness is not about accumulation and being like, oh, thank you God so much for this. Thank you God so much for this. Like not thinking that I have the capability of doing things myself, but understanding that like he's the one, but like to another level that, It's not about accumulation and saying thank you for those things, but it's about appreciation for what you have, even if what you have is nothing, even if what you have is not what you expected it to be, even if what you have is not what you want it to be, but still realizing and understanding like what we talked about last year, like his omnipresence, that he knows why he's doing what he's doing and it's going to work out for your good. Today's episode, I'm really going to kind of walk through quite literally the best sermon that I could have listened to as my last sermon of 2021, I believe. Um, There may have been one other one that I watched, kind of like a watch night type sermon thing, you know, going into 2022. Um, But this sermon by Stephen Furtick, it was called graduating in gratitude and I was like oh perfect you know what I'm saying and this literally just I mean it was the he mentioned it kind of like the commencement speech of of gratitude and it really put me at that place where I felt so whole and ready to move into the next year graduating from the idea that the year of 21 was the year of gratitude and so I'm just going to kind of share with you all my perspective as I walk through this sermon and of course I'm going to leave it in the show notes for you guys because this is like a major kingdom key so the first thing that I wrote down here was maybe what I needed in my life in the year of 2021 wasn't the next level of accomplishment or accumulation, but my next level of appreciation for what I have, because that will set the stage for me to make the most of what I will accumulate in the future. 
So what that basically means is that I didn't really have New Year's resolutions for this year, but I did make a vision board and I had different things that I wanted to work on. And on my vision board, I literally had a section of things that I was grateful for in order to kind of always look back on it. Once a month, I literally went back, I set up an alarm on my phone or a reminder. So the first of every month, I went back and I looked to see and remind myself of the things that the beginning of the year I would be grateful for but of course I also had like this vision board section in the middle where these are the things that I wanted to accomplish the things that I wanted to achieve the things that I wanted to accumulate literally <laughs> there is one small thing that kind of came true on that like huge vision board thing but everything in that gratitude section stayed the same the things that I had to be grateful for stayed the same the list didn't really get longer but it didn't get shorter. But that list of things that I could have accumulated, the things that I could have accomplished, it didn't move. Pastor Frederick said it so perfectly in his sermon where he said, if you grow in gifts, but not in gratitude, what will you gain? And this year it's like, I realized I've basically grown in no gifts, but I have grown in so much gratitude. And what I believe that I will gain from this past year is not just being happy for what I have, because I have everything or that I got everything that I wanted or I accomplished all the things that I hoped for, but I've been able to make the most out of what I do have and truly trust God for the future of what he's preparing for me. Let me just say this one thing, <laughs> because honestly, he said this thing in his sermon and I was like, yes, preach. Like gratitude is not instinctual. Gratitude is not something that you just come out of the womb and say, thank you, mom, for giving birth to me. Like you have to really teach yourself how to have gratitude. And for me, it started off very small. Like I said, even just like writing a list, like these are the things that I'm grateful for. And Throughout the year, I kind of had this saying, like attitude of gratitude, like sometimes I would just check myself, like you need to change your attitude to be grateful for what you have. And I just repeated it and just forced myself to believe it to be true. But there's a difference between grateful heart and grateful habits. So Pastor Furtick basically broke down the foundation of gratitude. And that's what I'm going to walk through with you all today. Right. So he starts off with Moses in Deuteronomy 8.10. And he's basically talking to the children of Israel. Those people are so, am I a child of Israel? <sighs> Father Abraham had many sons. I guess I'm one of them. And so are you. Because these people, like if y'all really read the Bible and you just start putting yourself in the different perspectives, like in the different people's if you put yourself in the shoes of the different characters, right? I always talk about how I'm always the main character. <laughs> so if I'm reading about David, I'm David. I'm reading about Moses and I'm Moses. And I'm like, oh, of course, like I spoke to God. I was the one who had that face-to-face -face interaction with him. And then I had to tell the children of Israel, remain great. No, 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 no. Take a second. <laughs> You're a child of Israel. In this situation, this is Moses coming to me being like, remember to say thank you. Right. So mind you, there are levels to this. So this is the first level, which is literally like, just say thank you. So to start off the podcast, let's just say thank you. I'm going to kind of give you guys what I did in my um, newsletter and just do like a year review of all the things that I have to be grateful for. Just looking back in gratitude and sharing the experiences that I got to live this year. I made it through nine months. <laughs> nine long hard months of MCAT studying. Starting in September, it was nine long hard months. And just speaking of gratitude here, I'm just grateful that I made it through. I'm grateful that I finished. I'm grateful that I didn't give up and I took the test no matter how hard it was, no matter how many times that I had to reschedule, no matter how many tears I cried, I did it. It was long and it was hard, but I did it. I got to travel to Tulum to Mexico, another country on my list, another culture that I got to experience with some of my best friends. I got to experience my best friends graduating from college. That's a blessing. I'm so grateful for that. Um, I had a job waiting for my return after being on a leave of absence for over five months. Like, I'm grateful. 
I got to compete at Miss Maryland for the second year in a row. I had a great team of people helping me prepare, helping me create my own stage for my at-home pageant. I made top 10. I made top five. I earned scholarship money and I won third runner-up. Like I'm so grateful for that entire experience. I got to travel to Paris. I went to Paris in 2021. I went to Paris, France. I've always wanted to go to Paris. I went to Morocco, Marrakesh. Like I went to Marrakesh, Morocco. Like I I traveled the world in 2021, no matter how bad it was. In the middle of a pandemic, I still saw Tulum, Paris, and Morocco. And I got to spend my birthday in a foreign country, which I've wanted to do for so long. And I got to travel on my birthday with one of my best friends. And I had a really great time. I produced an entire pageant for incoming HBCU graduates, providing them with mentorship and a scholarship and hopefully just a community going into this new thing that I (laughs) have been so traumatized by. And I wish I did for somebody what I wish somebody would have done for me. I started a podcast. (laughs) Here we are. It was long and it was a little bit shaky in the beginning, but I started it. At least I started it. Something that I've had on my list for years now, I finally started a podcast. I realized how much of a caring internet family that I have like you guys care for my well-being I'll never forget when I came back to social media specifically first on Instagram and just the love the outpour like I just I remember literally making an Instagram post about it because I was like I need to always remember and be grateful for the fact that like y'all don't know me from a can of paint in a store but y'all ride for me so hard and heavy and clearly like y'all know me because I share all my business on the internet but it's still really crazy to know that thousands of you were waiting for my return and not because I'm so great but just because of the way that I'm allowing myself to share my story that it's touching you all and you guys are writing for me and just having that community is something that I'm super grateful for. My best friend, my childhood best friend moved back to Maryland after us being in separate states for over six years. We're finally living 10 minutes away from each other again. My other best friend has moved back to the States after us being in separate countries for three, four years now. We're finally back in the same country, which I know sounds again just minuscule, but us being a drive or a small flight away is so much better than us being 14 hours of a flight away. I've had the financial stability and standing to apply to medical school alone without the fee assistance program, without help from mommy and daddy. Like I applied (laughs) to all those schools by myself and it ripped my pockets apart, but I'm glad that I was at least able to do it. I didn't have to look and say, I can only do these amount of schools. I applied widely because I could And that is a blessing. And I'm so grateful for that. I received secondaries. I received secondaries back from schools. I could have applied to 20 schools and heard nothing back, but no, no, thank you. I received several secondaries back. Um, I, and I even had a community of people to help me complete them, to look over them, to give me advice along the way. And even people to just check in on me and saying, Hey, how are things going? Are you doing okay? Have you heard anything back? If not, you're worthy or capable is going to happen. Even if those people are you guys here online, I I've been able to still serve my state this entire year as Miss Washington County. You guys know how much I love serving, being out in the community. It's taught me so many different things about myself and about the world around me. And that's such an amazing thing to be able to do is to just get on your community and serve and to be able to do so in Washington County for two years now. I'm so grateful for and above or below everything else. I mean, I've got food in my stomach. I've got a roof over my head. I've got clothes on my back. And I even have a new pair of four wheels to take me from point A to point B. That is my very rushed, but very real year in review. I have many things to be grateful for. Like I know, like I said, this has been my job year. And there's been a lot of things that you guys don't even know about that have just like broken me and made me feel like I was at my wits end and that I was at the bottom but clearly I still have things to say thank you for so let's just start off by just first being like 2021 it may have been bad but it it's I still have things to be thankful for so I'm just going to start off by saying thank you however (laughs) 
However, comma, I used to say that all the time. However, comma, what Pastor Furtick shared with us is that this is not mature to be able to say, thank you, God, for what you have given me. That's just manners. If you sneeze right now and I said, bless you, that's not really me being a great person. It's manners. It's just, I'm just saying, thank you, Lord, for what you have given me. It's very easy to say thank you for what you have in front of you. It still has a lot of power on its own because you know, I was saying to myself, like, okay, let me just write a couple things. I'm thankful for the food in my stomach. I'm thankful for the clothes on my back. But like, when I really was able to write it through and even saying things where I'm like, oh, I mean, yeah, I'm grateful for it. But like, you know what I'm saying? When it comes like to the MCAT studying or like me applying to secondaries and it's like, yeah, I haven't heard anything back or, but yeah, I didn't do the best that I wanted to do. But no, like just stopping it right there and just saying thank you. I think that that was something that I, that was that was the first level of 2021. Just me having to get to you have things to be grateful for. So start saying thank you. Start praising him now for what he has already done. But then it was time to graduate. <laughs> oh Lord, it was time to graduate. And if you guys don't know, so my favorite verse, and this has been my favorite verse forever. I have new ones that have kind of come into my life that speaks a little bit more it, they just feel a little bit more pertinent to my life at this point in time. But like the OG will always be Psalms 23. That's always been like what's been in my um, bio in Instagram. But again, I've changed it this year. But yay, <laughs> though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. That's like one of the first verses that like on my own, I really like read, felt and like memorized on my own. Like and this was back to my Christian Dance Academy days. I talk about the place all the time. Again, the seeds that it planted. But like, it hits so different in every season. Because at one point, it was definitely like, yay, do I walk through the valley? Shut up. Def- I will fear no evil. But now it's like, yo, I'm walking through the valley of the shadow of death. <laughs> like, you, this is my valley season, right? Like, this is my valley season. And so our professor of this level, right? is David, because David wrote Psalm 23. And in this season, he's teaching us how to thank God, even though. So the first level is just like saying thank you. Thank you for what you can see. Thank you for what I have. Thank you for what you've done. The next level is thanking God, even though. (sighs) That's what most of 2021 has been. Because like I said, 2021 is my season in the valley. And I've still found a way to thank him, even though it's been hard. It's been long. Sometimes I go back and I go forth. But I've really just been learning to trust God with what I cannot see. That is literally what this year is all about. Because even when I think about, I'm kind of moving ahead of myself here. But when I just think about the end of 2021 and the beginning of 2022 and where I am, I kind of felt a little bit uneasy because it's like not much has really changed. Like we want to believe, right? It's 2022. It's a new year. Things are new. Everything's new. But I mean, am I going to immediately get a medical school acceptance when the clock turns 12? Am I going to immediately move out of my mom's place? Am I going to immediately get a new job? Am I going to me? No, it's like, Things feel new, but at the end of the day, when the clock strikes 12, things are still the same. But I believe that 2022 is going to be different. I believe that the promises are going to be fulfilled in 2022. I believe that things are going to be different. I believe that all of the things that made up my Job year are going to stay in 2021 and things are going to start blossoming in 2022. And I believe that based off of the things that I cannot currently see. I, I do not see anything different. New Year is such a mind trip because I literally, you close your eyes, you wake up and you're like, oh, it's a new year. But I don't know about you guys all day on January 1st. I love to just look at the calendar, say one, one, January one. It's like, is it really the difference than it saying February one? No, but yes, <laughs> like it just feels different. It's like I just have this, I really believe 
And it took this whole year of me having to show gratitude for what I could not see to really believe that it's because he's preparing something for me that I will one day receive. And I believe that I'll receive that in 2022. That's the end of the story here at 2021. But that May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. (laughs) Okay, that was that was the hard time in the season where I wasn't receiving anything new. There was nothing on my table where I could say, oh, thank you, God, but I still had to say thank you, right? I've had months of being in a season where I've had to say thank you, even though understanding that God's gifts alone don't bring me joy and that God's gifts can only bring me joy when they're joined with my gratitude. Because like now, we already know. (laughs) I'm acting different. You're acting different. Like if I would have received just anything, I always say, you know, nothing is really handed to me. I work for everything that I have. That's why I turn up and I celebrate for my wins and my successes, Um, even when they're small and little. And I just have to say things like I was able to be in a foreign country for my birthday. I mean, I'm sorry. That's huge. That's amazing. I mean, we can just use again this medical school process As an example, when I get that acceptance, it's going to hit so different. Not only is it going to hit different, but my gratitude is going to be different. If I just would have applied to medical school right after undergrad, I don't really know if I'm going to get it. Whoosh, okay, I'm in medical school. Cool. I would have been like, well, thank you, God, that worked out. But the praise that is going to come out of my mouth for this time you know this acceptance the the way that I cannot deny that like getting the things that I've been wanting for praying for hoping for are going to bring me joy obviously but it's like the gratitude and the praise that is going to come with it because of this valley because of this period of suffering because of because of the amount of time that I've had to be steadfast it's going to hit different and so I'm like excited I'm now saying thank you even though there's like nothing on my table because there's been so much doubt there's been so many feelings of inadequacy that I could have really thought that you wouldn't have done it that it wasn't going to happen but the fact that I trust in you so this second part of 2021 I mean it hasn't been easy and I definitely haven't mastered it but my eyes have been open to how I need to have a heart of praise in the presence of in the presence of my enemies, of discontentment, of uncertainty, and again, those feelings of inadequacy. One saying that has just been running true or ringing true in my ears, specifically towards the end of this year, is that if it didn't serve God's purpose, he wouldn't allow it to happen to me because all things work together for good for those who love the Lord. I just believe that so strongly. I believe it for me and I believe it for you. So, so much of this year, I have just been praising him in pain, but also in preparation for the provision. Again, knowing that he sees and he's preparing me. Like I have so much peace recently, especially when it comes to what next year will look like because I am I'm so serious when I'm declaring I'm not going to be in the same place next year. Like things are going to change, but like also feeling like I win either way because God's got me. Like if next year for me looks like I'm in medical school, thank you, Lord. I know that I knew that you had me from the beginning. And, you know, I just had to, whether I had to go through this whole process, that way I knew like, yo, the fact that I'm here right now proves that God has been listening to me. He's on my side. He believes in me and he placed me here on purpose. But even if that doesn't happen, if I end up in a post back next year, then I'm like then that means that God has been looking out for me and in the same ways that I had fears of inadequacy the same way that I had doubts for myself he's putting me in a position where I am just going to have to grow where I will literally feel so confident in my capabilities in my knowledge in my stance that when I do go to medical school next, because the two things are not mutually exclusive, doing a post back does not mean I'll never become a doctor. Doing more schooling does not mean that I will not accomplish my goals of going to medical school. It just means that he's preparing me so that way when I get to medical school, eventually those that fear of inadequacy will no longer be there and those doubts will be diminished. So it was really crazy because like I said, nothing has changed. 
I've been praising him throughout the pain this entire year. But specifically, I just feel like, yo, God's got me like we gonna be all right. Like I'm literally I'm going to be okay. Because either way I win, win or lose, whichever way this next year goes, it's going to be for my benefit because I know that he knows the long plan and he's going to make sure that I'm prepared each and every step of the way. Even if it feels like I've misstepped, he's like, ah, I had to teach you how to do that little, ah, ah, ah. that way you'd be ready for the next step. And so even though there's been times where I felt like I have nothing to be grateful for, the fact that nothing is moving means that God is planning, that he's preparing, and that he's orchestrating. That alone is something to be grateful for. So that's my level two that I've mastered through the year of 2021, being grateful even though. Now, this third level of gratitude is the most advanced level that was demonstrated by Paul. And this level is because of this. And that basically means finding purpose that God worked out of the situation. So it really helps to look back. Like I said, I've been, I've been through a lot of things, but it's helpful to be able to look at these different things and say, okay, because of this, I understand, you know, why I had to go through these things. I understand why this person had to betray me. I understand why I had to not get that job, not get into that school. And I'm thanking you for it because I understand that, again, you're using it for my better. You're using it to teach me something, to show me something, to grow me, to prepare me. And I really feel like I've stepped into that. Like this is the most ultimate level, but I've been able to literally receive deny letters from schools and immediately just say, thank you, God. Thank you for taking away a place that I wasn't supposed to be. Thank you for centering me on where I'm supposed to go. Maybe I would have chosen this school, which wouldn't have been the right place for me. I would have met the wrong person, been in the wrong environment, the wrong state, the wrong city, whatever it is. But you know that if it was between this school and this school, I may have chosen that school. So thank you for removing it. Thank you for removing it so that way I'm still in line. It's this concrete sense of purpose with my life, knowing that God's got me. I'm sorry, but you could not tell me that I have not leveled up. Like I have leveled up in my faith through this season of gratitude, not just praising him for the pain, but truly understanding what the pain is producing. Like this year has been nothing but painful for me. There has been, you know, I said little pockets of things that are just easily, I can easily be grateful for the fact that I was able to travel to Paris. But can I also easily be grateful for the fact that I didn't do as well as I wanted on the MCAT just so that I can teach me a lesson in the future? It's hard. The fact that I can even wrap my mind around the fact that God would present me with failure and hardships and pain in order for it to point me towards my purpose. I think that we're moving. (laughs) We're shaking. We're growing. We are a work in progress. So I ended 2021 praising God while he is still preparing my blessings for me because I trust in him and long story short, I know that it's going to be good. Every obstacle I face, I'm praising him. Every denied letter, I'm praising him. Every challenge, every setback, I'm praising him. I'm praising him because at the end of the day, the master storyteller is only putting me in the position to receive something great once I'm ready. So here we are in 2022 and I have lived to tell the tale. which proves my anchor verse for 2021. My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is perfected in your weakness. 2 Corinthians 3, 5. I really feel like grace is a word that I want to do more digging into because it's something that I would just, I never really said, like grace was really not in my vocabulary. Like what exactly does grace mean? But then when I was creating this podcast and the script and things that I was really feeling that I want to say every day, you guys know, when I close out, I say, you know, give yourself some grace. And that was really starting to hit differently because I'm just like, dang, every time I say it, I'd be like, dang, yeah, like I really need to give myself some grace. Right. But this is just me giving myself grace. And so what is the level? How great of a level is it? The grace that God has given me. That's something that I need to do some unpacking on. But I say that to say, here we are in 2022, you know, it's no longer the year of gratitude. We've learned from it, you know, we're going to continue to use 
the things that we've learned in this next year because it was really just like building the foundation. So it's like, okay, what's the word for 2022 going to be? <laughs> and I'm scared. <laughs> I'm scared. You guys, because knowing, right, that the last time I chose a word, I was ripped to the to my job year, I was ripped to the bottom to where I felt like I had nothing left to be grateful for. Like I really should go into detail, but I just really don't have the time because I really want to break down the second word for you guys. But if I were to go into detail about how low my lows were, like there was months where I was like, yo, this is wrong. This is wrong. This is taken away from me. This is taken away from me. I ain't got this. I ain't got this. I ain't got this. Th- this is going wrong. This is going bad. My skin, my like everything is just like, just everything. Like is there anything going good in life, girl? The answer is no. <laughs> like that's what it really felt like for like months during 2021. And it's because I had the audacity to say that 2021 was going to be the year of gratitude. And it's like, ah, I'm scared to know what the Lord is going to put me through. Can we be honest? Can we be real? I'm so scared of what the Lord is going to put me through in 2022 with this word that was simply just placed on my my heart. It's like it popped into my head and I was like, what? <laughs> not me. Breland? Breland Donye Hunt. Breland, Bre- Breland Donye Hunt. Me? That don't even make sense. Like that don't even, that don't even, that's not even me for real. Like, I know y'all are so annoyed. Y'all are like, what is it? What is the word? What is the word of the year? I'm scared. <laughs> I've only said it to myself. And I've been writing it out and kind of like really just trying to do the work. Like, what exactly does this mean? But I feel like this is this is what it's supposed to be because I am scared. And if I went into the year, like it's gratitude 2.0. <laughs> 2022 is gratitude 2.0. Fo- no, that's not what it's supposed to be. Like, and so I'm pushing myself. And (laughs) when I say it here, it's okay, here we go. 2022 is the year of love. Oh, Lord. (laughs) Let me explain why that kind of scares me. If the word of the year is actually what I will struggle with the most and feel the most separated from the most how will this look for me at the end of the year? How will this year's journey lead me to feel like I've grown in love? And in what ways do I potentially need to grow in love? So I kind of broke it down into several different categories because of course, you know, the first thing that you're going to think about is, oh, it's the year of love. Breland going to get a boo, you know? <laughs> Calm down. Everybody calm down. Maybe I'm not going to say no. Because like people, y'all are so pressed. And this is just for everybody. Mom, dad, friends, pastors. Y'all so pressed for me to find love. And even my pastor was talking to me. Yeah, I'm talking about you, PC. Because since you want to watch all my content, people are so pressed for me to find love. And even as a hopeless romantic, I'm like, yo, I'm not phased. I'm not phased to be in love right now. I'm so worried about me, myself, and I. I'm I'm so self-consumed about like what I have going on, trying to be a better person, trying to accomplish my goals, just like on the grind that I'm like, I can't even fathom trying to share anything with somebody else right now, like let alone like be in a true deep relationship where I have to open myself up like I don't I don't have the time and I just personally right now don't have the interest and I know it makes people so sad and confused because even as a person who aspires to be married one day as a person who aspires to have a husband aspires to you know like be a wife like I I'm also not like counting down the clock like, oh, God, I'm 25. Next year, I'll be 26. And like, I've still never really had a real boyfriend. I really also don't care. I, I can't. I just I can't explain the way that I feel other than I feel like there's other things that are more important in my life right now that I'd rather focus on. Like, do I want love one day? Yeah, sure. So it confuses me. The fact that God placed on my heart and in my mind the year of love. I was like, 
For who? <laughs> and why? <laughs> and why now? What's, what does that mean? But as I really started to break it down, what I'm feeling, where I'm feeling like the year of love, what I need to learn from this year's journey, right? First off, starts off with self-love. I'm so excited for you guys to see the new form of content that I've kind of landed on because I'm in this season now of self-love. Like, it's time to start loving myself regardless of the circumstances with and without accomplishments and success understanding myself on a deeper level with higher awareness, learning and listening to my higher self, my subconscious mind, healing from my past traumas, taking risks and dreaming unforgotten dreams and educating myself on the world around me and the spirit that lives within me and how they can meet so that my soul can live freely. Like that is what I think of when I'm thinking of the year of love. I'm thinking of like this self-love journey that I'm about to go through and go on like on this whole other level that I myself has not even fully been able to comprehend. I also think about the love of God. I think I've talked to you guys about this before, or maybe it was one of my friends where I'm like, again, we're graduating our faith. We're moving on from like the, oh, thank you, Lord, for forgiving me for my sins. I will forever now, you know, my name will be in the Lamb's Book of Life. I really want to move into that place. Like this past year has really been like, I'm trusting you. Like you are my Lord. You are my leader. I'm going to you for everything because I believe and I trust that you know the ultimate plan and you have the best interest for my life. Now I want to move into that place where like I love God. Like I want to love to spend time with him. I want to love to hear from him. I want to love just like being around him like that feeling like I'm sure some of you all feel with your significant other the only way that I know about this is like kind of like with my best friend like that feeling that you love to spend all day with your bf like I want to be so engulfed in his love that like he's the first person I want to tell when something happens to me and he's the first person I want his opinion on things like how you like oh I, I want to know like you know what my girlfriend thinks about this or like when I have a, a bright idea I have you know a couple of people who come to my mind I want to tell them this I want to tell them this or have this idea or this new content thing or this great thing happened to me I want God to be the first person that I go to that I run to about these things good or bad new or old fresh or dry because I love him like that's what I'm really trying to get myself to in this next year which really just comes down to like spending time with him reading his word and things like that and that's some of the things that are going to manifest in like the the goals that I have for myself this year or kind of like the the new practices that I'm going to put in place in order to have these outcomes by the end of 2022 also familial love like the love of my family I have so long, like this past year, especially again, when I was studying for the MCAT, which it, there's, it's crazy how much that stupid MCAT really just impacted my life. But I really put my family on pause um, in order to like fully focus and study. And I just want to kind of, and I really haven't been able to undo the things that were kind of done during that period of isolation and I think that family is really important and I've really taken adv advantage of the fact that like everybody who I know and I love are here in my vicinity and I have a lot of estranged relationships that I just want to put more effort into um and just simply show love to because like these are this is my family so I want to you know do better with familial love um and then like relationally like I think that I have not been doing a good job of both giving and receiving love from people. Um, and I just, whether it be again from friends or from a significant other or, you know, from my family, I think that I've been like really hard on myself 
And that has not manifested in, again, that self-love. And so it's been really hard for me to like give love to other people. So I've been like really hard on other people. And um, even if it just means like it's not the right person because they haven't been able to give me, you know, the love that I need during that time or whatever it is, I think that I just want to like just grow in receiving the love that I get, but then also like grow in the love that I'm able to give to other people. Because I don't think that I've peaked at all. I think that I'm still a very, I'm I'm so weirdly self-absorbed and consumed in like my own personal growth. So it's like, it's so weird because I'm pretty sure some people think that I'm like self-absorbed and it's like I am, but I'm like self-absorbed for like for my own growth. But sometimes that can really seem like I don't really care about other people. And I don't really like give other people like love like I just kind of don't pay attention to other people um and I want to do better at that because like love is so powerful and um and lastly the love of life like I really want to get back to like loving life like this past year I've probably been the furthest from it and the most aware of how much I like do not love life like specifically my life but just like life in general which is it's kind of counterintuitive because how can you be grateful when you don't love what you have? And so I want to love life. I want to be happy with where I am, with who I'm around, with what I do, with the experiences that I have, you know, the things that are, I I have this new thing that just was like a light bulb for me. I want to love all the things that are good and for my good. Like, you know how we say like the good and the bad? And it's like, is it really bad or is it good? And then for my good, because some things happen and you may feel like they're bad, but they're likely just for your good. So I want to love the things that are good and for my good, even when they don't feel like they're either. And then, you know, doing more of what I love and less of what I don't. I feel like 2021 was so much of doing what I have to do instead of doing what I want to do. And that's why I kind of like kind of grew out of love with life. And I just want to like fall back in love. So that is what I'm thinking of when I'm thinking of the year of love for 2022. Like I said, you can kind of hear the different ways that it's going to manifest in my life. And I'm super excited about it. I think that it's kind of like different and it's, it must be meant to be because I would not choose this word (laughs) out of just like the 2022 is the year I get married. I ain't speaking against it, but like, I think this is more so, you know, the way that I'm going to focus on it and the way that I think, you know, it needs to manifest for 2022. And the way that I plan on doing this, like I said, there's going to be little things like really getting in the word and and reading and doing quiet time and spending time with my family and my friends and things like that. Like there's different things that I'm going to do. But when doing research on how I can start to make the change of love with my mindset, which is so weird to think about, right? That like something that comes from the heart, that it low key has to start from the mind. And so I kind of got introduced to this new theory of mind where the formula of life in order to change your perspective of bad things into good things is called more fati. And it's not merely to bear what is necessary, but to love it. I think it just didn't make sense to go to gratitude from gratitude to love. And now it just makes so much sense. It's it's so clear because gratitude is kind of just like, okay, like even though I don't have anything, like thank you, Lord. And now I'm moving into the mindset of like, I love that this is happening for me. I love that I'm at this low place because man, it's going to be a testimony for somebody else. I love that I don't know where I'm at right now because I love that I can dream new things I can create new you know ideas new habits new like whatever it is it's like chosen or tragic I'm changing my perspective into loving what is happening to me and for me in order to believe like this is for me I chose this I want it this way because I will be better for having this happened to me That's the mindset I'm going into 2022 with. Like, I love that this is happening to me because I love my life. And it goes back to that verse of 
we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love him. So if I'm starting off my year, like I want to really love God and I'm doing this work to love him, then when all these things happen to me, I love that these things are happening because he's causing them to happen because it's all for my good. So if it's for my good, then who am I to hate it? I must love it because I love God. So it must be working for me. I hope this is making sense. But like you guys can imagine, and I've mentioned this before, I wrote about this in my blog post, like, um, again, in 2018, when I was blogging, and I was like, the new year is my favorite holiday, because I can really just get in my head, it just feels so mind blowing and new. And I think that this is a very new perspective that I haven't had really ever. And I'm so excited to start my new year off with this mindset, just to love it all. And like to use it as fuel because I'm becoming better from it and I'm being improved by it. So that's the first podcast episode for this year. I want to leave you off with this. I mean, if nobody has ever said it to you, I will. Well done on getting this far. You should be so proud of yourself. Keep it up. Keep being kind to you. And most importantly, keep going. Because what we suffer now is nothing compared to the glory that he will reveal to us later. Let's go ahead and get into some kingdom keys. Because I believe that God speaks to us in various different ways. I, I personally feel very motivated just by the start of the new year. But for anybody, if you're still going through something, but you don't feel that ammunition that things are going to change, I just want to remind you that the God of peace will soon crush Satan under your feet. Romans 16 20. So have confidence. Your situation is temporary. God has already foreseen a way out. So be persuaded as well that you're in his hand and that in him all things work together for place for God to fulfill his promise over your life. And I'm going to break that down. When my kid starts acting right, I'll be happy. No, I'm saying no. The Lord spoke in Egypt. He brought his son out of Egypt. He spoke to Joseph in Egypt. You still missed it. You think that God is waiting for stuff to change. You think that joy is going to be when things change. But it won't. You have got to get it out of Egypt. You have got to learn how to be in a bound place, a broke place, a hard place, a tricky place, a sticky place. 2022, things are going to literally be just handed to you. You're not going to have to work as hard. You're not going to have to beg. You're, you're not, and you should never beg. You're not going to have to be running after people for opportunities. For I hear the Lord saying that your name has always been circulating and been in the wind. And this is why God didn't want you to connect with people that wanted you to connect with them in the past because their motives were wrong. And God wanted you to know that I can do this all by myself and I don't need their help. In fact, those who you thought were going to help you were secretly trying to manipulate you and trying to attach themselves to you just to see what they can get out of you, but they really didn't have a heart for you. And so God is saying, if you can just hold still and just ride this week out, in fact, be joyful and be happy. God gives his toughest battles to his strongest warriors. Ah. What a horrible thing to say to people in a bad season of life. Kelly asks, why has it felt like I have been in a valley for years? Where's my mountaintop? Does he even hear me? I'll send you to Psalm 13. How long, Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long will I store up anxious concerns within me, agony in my mind every day? How long will my enemy dominate me? Consider me an answer, Lord my God. Restore brightness to my eyes. Otherwise, I will sleep in death. My enemy will say I have triumphed over him, and my foes will rejoice because I am shaken. But I have trusted in your faithful love. My heart will rejoice in your deliverance. I will sing to the Lord because he has treated me so generously.
I think what I love about Psalm 13 is David was honest with God about how he felt. He's not pretending he's okay. He's not going on and just being like, it's great. I'm fine. He sits down and talks to God and is like, how long am I going to be in this point in my life? Why are you ignoring me? This is what's so beautiful about prayer and praise and Bible study is that the more time you spend with him, you're giving him an opportunity to shift to a perspective. And in that shift, the posture of your heart is changing and suddenly you see the goodness of God and suddenly your anxieties replaced with peace. And I'm not saying he's gonna fix your problems. This isn't gonna give you the answer to why am I in this place? I can't do that for you. And maybe God won't either. Maybe he's not gonna fix it, but he's gonna help you get through it. Alrighty, now we can finally end off this episode with our first affirmations of 2022. <sighs> Join me in a few minutes of guided affirmations in order to keep our spirits up and focused as we move throughout our day. Remove all distractions and verbally repeat these words after me. I forgive my past and look forward to my future. I am thankful that I am releasing all worries and finding peace within me. I am learning to love myself unconditionally. I am grateful for the seeds that I have planted in my soul. I see the blessings in life and I am grateful even when it isn't perfect. My body is healthy, my mind is brilliant, my soul is tranquil. Thank you so much for listening to today's podcast episode. I actually forgot to mention this earlier. I was going to... (laughs) um, I know in the last podcast episode, I mentioned how I wasn't feeling well and how I was exposed to a few people who tested positive for the vid. And uh, yeah, what other way to end my Job year? Like I said, a year of illness and grief and sadness than (laughs) with Omicron. So yeah, um, I want you guys to continue to keep me in your prayers because unfortunately I am in quarantine right now because I... I I finally got it. (laughs) Okay, which I don't I don't know. I feel different ways about it. Part of me is kind of like I'm in the healthcare field. So like it was going to happen eventually. I also feel like I'm glad that it happened at the end of 2021, because it allowed me, you know, time to rest that I wouldn't have otherwise gotten. And it like I said, it really just put a bow on the fact that yeah, 2021 was trash. Um, and like, of course I would get COVID at the end of 2021. Um, but then also like, I feel grateful because this wasn't like the hard, harsh 2020 COVID, you know, this was that I had it, like I said, I, I mean, I definitely had some symptoms and I was dealing with it all week. Um, but I'm okay. Like I'm healthy. I'm healthy. My mind is still sharp and strong. You know, I got a little bit of a congestion going on right now, a little bit of fatigue. Um, and the worst of my symptoms is that stupid chills. I hate those chills, man. They just run through my body. So I have a heater on me kind of 24 seven. But other than those things, I am doing well. I just want to, you know, inform you all <laughs> that the vid did get me because um, it just puts into perspective, like really, that was my job year, like illnesses even got me even on my last days. <laughs> but um, Yeah, just keep me in your prayers as I continue to um, recover and quarantine and um, get better and all those fun things. So anyway, thank you so much for listening to today's episode. Please subscribe. If you're listening on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, make sure that you rate the podcast and leave a review. Five star ratings only. If you're watching the pod on youtube.com slash Breland Beauty and Brains, make sure you are subscribed and leave a comment, especially if you made it this far. And as always, you can follow me on Instagram and TikTok at Breland Hunt. You can also visit my website, breelandhunt.com for weekly podcast updates or to contact me to 
share your story. If you guys want to join the newsletter, make sure you click the link in the description box down below. It'll also be in the show notes if you are listening to the podcast. And until next time, make sure you live each day to the fullest because we only live once and give yourself some grace. We are all just a work in progress. Happy New Year, you guys. I will see you next week. Oh,